Welcome to another video of Next Meridian Expedition. In this video, we're going to be talking about solar panels and we're going to go from A to Z on everything that has to do with the installation. So the products themselves, the electrical, the cabling, and then the testing. All right, let's go. We're going to be installing two 12 volt, 120 watt solar panels right on the roof. We have to thank our partners Sunware for sending us two uh, new panels and also for sending them all the way here in Peru. We are in Cusco and they sent it via DHL. We are very excited and can't wait to install them. We're gonna show you the whole process from A to Z until it functions. Uh, we just received the package, so we're going to pull it off the car. We're going to open it and then start setting it all up. Oh, nice. It's so thin. It's very thin. And here it is. And voila, the two solar panels are here, both 120 watts, 12 volt. Got the installation guides with a little bit of screws, which we'll talk about soon. The two solar panels come with a uh, cell voltage protection. So that means that if there's too much current coming from the sun or heat because of the sun heating up the panels, transferring to your vehicle, this will protect the panel and your battery. So this is really a neat uh, installation that Sunware has. So we're going to install them both for sure. The next thing you'll notice is how thin the panel is. This is probably 15 millimeter and it is extremely light. Okay, the first thing you need is an aluminum sheet. And the idea is to make four holes here, four holes here of five millimeter. Why five millimeter? That's just what I'd use. So these are the bolts that I use. So the first job is to make these holes. I did them 33 centimeters apart. That's where the holes of the sunware panels are. And then same thing, 33 centimeters apart. The difference here is 1.3 centimeter from the edge to the pin. And same here, 1.3 and 1.3. So for now, just eight holes is sufficient. This is exactly where the holes of the solar panels are. You can't make holes in the middle. So you have to make holes on the side. And these eight are enough. All right, once that is done, we get on the roof of the vehicle and here's my aluminum plate. So as you can see, I already have a Sunware solar panel and I've already made here the designs of where the rivets will go. So I'm going to be putting eight rivets, four on that side, four on this side, and I might add four in the middle like I did with this one. I'll think about it. All you'll need is a pierce gun of uh, four millimeter. My rivets are four millimeter. You'll need hammer and nail just to help. To, so you'll do that first on the parts here just to give it a little dent and that will help then guide the gun into through this and into the cart. Uh, electricity, then we'll need a rivet gun and I'm gonna go get silicon. So we'll put silicon around the rivet, put it in so that will waterproof the area and then we'll use the gun to break it off. Finally, what you need to be sure of is that the rivet is long enough to fit through your aluminum sheet and through the roof. So that's why you need to make sure that this part is long enough. Now, the silicon, uh, make sure it withstands 50 Celsius or more because it's on the roof, it's gonna heat up. And secondly, uh, it needs to be water resistant and be, uh, be strong enough to hold everything in place without any leaks going into your roof. So what I'm going to start with is making the holes with the hammer and needle to help guide uh, my drill and then silicon and put the rivets in there. All right, let's start. Okay, once the holes are made, I would uh, test out that the rivet properly fits just so that you don't have any surprises. And uh, once that is done, put a little bit of silicon in each of the holes just to make sure they're watertight. So I would just put a tiny bit just like that type of thing and then clean it up a little bit. 
there we go so that when we're pushing the rivet in it'll watertight all the holes what i would do next is put silicon around the rivet so that you're sure it's watertight So you'd have a little bit of silicon that smidges out but see now it's tight and that's it that is job done so eight rivets here eight rivets there what i've done at the end is once you break off the rivet there's going to be a little hole in the center so that's why i siliconed all around the rivet and especially the hole in the middle it doesn't matter if it's ugly because the solar panel is going to come above and what's more important is that this area is watertight and the panel anyways will cover this uh, artwork because water not getting into the car is more important than how it looks so that's job done now the next job is putting the solar panel now the reason why i put these bolts before putting the riveting down the sheet is because you can't put the bolt in now so all i have to do is put a screw to hold the bolt unscrew this put the solar panel screw it tight done I've used uh, locking nuts. If you don't have any, just put thread lock so that you're sure with the vibrations, it'll never come off and that's it. Okay, as you might notice, uh, the solar panels here have uh, little indications of where you can make holes. When I put the panel, they directly fit on the good side. And what I'll do is I have a washer, which I'll fit right here, directly with a lock nut. So it's got the green, the blue thread. And the idea is we'll lock them all in place. And the panel will not move at all. So as you can see here, all of the corners have been bolted down and that's it. Now I have the two cables going behind and we're going to plug everything in. So as we install the panels, we have to cover them uh, because they're technically already working and sending current through the cables because they're in the sun. So what I need to do is cover the panel to not create any uh, short circuit and destroy the panel because the cell uh, regulator is still not installed. That's what I'm installing it onto now. Okay, we're now making a second hole on the roof so that we can get the cable of the second panel into the car. All right, so um, this is the cable that comes from the solar panel and as you can see it has three colors and on the guidebook I will show you right now they have a specific location and it goes to the cell protector which we're going to show you inside the car. Here it's written the cell protector. So this comes with a solar panel. Technically it has all these parts. So all you have to do is put this piece inside. There we go. So we place it in here. And so what we're going to be doing here is having, as you can see, it says solar here, red, green, blue. And then here is the output, meaning it's going towards the charge regulator. And here it has the plus and the minus. So I've just purchased uh, this five meter long cable with a positive and a negative. And I need that cable to go all around the vehicle, down the seat belt uh, cover and down to the battery. Okay, so this part is uh, not complicated because as we saw earlier, it said red, green, blue. So it, all we have to do is push it in the right colors. And then you cover it up with 
the cell regulator cover, close the whole thing, and you're set. Since we've already had a Sunwear panel uh, in the past, um, I've actually um, zip tied this to the vehicle to a location where it doesn't get too much humidity and uh, doesn't vibrate too much so that the, the cell protector works well. So this is where I've put it. So I put it here and what I'm going to do is put a uh, zip tie around this. Okay, that's it. So we've got the cable. This will be tucked behind. I'm gonna put some silicon on the hole, which is this one there. Um, and here's a cell regulator holding and then the cabling goes all front. I'm gonna show you right now. So as we see here, the cable comes through here. I've got a connection splitter here so I can turn it off uh, whenever I wish, the panel. And that cable goes uh, down this bit here, which is the belt column. And then it goes into the charge regulator. So the power goes in there. And from the charge regulator, straight to the battery, which is under the seat. Now the long cable arrives here. And so now my friend here is installing the positive and negative which will then fit in the solar in the Fox 360 charge regulator. So this is the solar one. This is battery one, battery two, or battery one and battery two. It's all in the manual. And this is output. We don't have any output because we use a 220 exchanger here for the power. So technically I just want this to charge battery one and two. And uh, this is the solar panel entry. So now we're putting in the solar panel entry. These cables are already connected to the battery. And under here, as you can see, we already have our AGM and here lithium. Okay, so everything is plugged in. As, as we can see here, battery one and battery two, they're both at 13 volts. And if I go down the menus, we can see here that I've chosen that battery one charges 70% more than battery two. And that's because battery one for us is the lithium battery, uh, which is the auxiliary battery, and I'd rather that one be charged. And so it will charge 70% this one and 30% the other one, which is the normal car battery. Now going at the next, I put them both as AGM. We have battery two is an AGM and battery one is actually a lithium, but under AGM, it also works. That's what Sunward has told us. So what we see here is that's the 12 volt lithium battery we have. You can see a discharge, which is our fridge. I'm going to turn it off now and it should turn to zero. Okay, we can see that everything is turned to zero. So I'm now going to turn on the solar panel to the battery and we should see it charge. Obviously, it's a 120 watt solar panel. It's not going to charge 120 watt. Also because there's clouds, the sun is not perpendicular to the, to the solar panel, but we will do the correct tests later when we leave the garage here. You'll see what I mean. Uh, there's a lot of clouds and the sun is not perfect so what we'll do is we'll hold this phone here and I'm going to turn on the power okay so I've just plugged it in we should be seeing something happening and what we see is a 37 watt charge which is great uh, even more 50 wow look at those 50 watts because the sun is now coming out a little bit more great so it's doing super well so the sun has come out a bit more now it's not perpendicular it's uh, to the panel so it's not perfect but it's already really good and so we're sure that the whole installation is great perfect so that's just perfect we just finished the whole installation uh, as we saw here there was the two connectors so I've added a new one for the second solar panel as well so I can disconnect and connect them whenever the idea is that any time I need to work on the vehicle and I don't want battery or energy to come through the cables into the vehicle while I'm working on the electricals, then I can disconnect the, ca uh, the cables of the solar panel. So in that way, it's much easier. Um, so everything is finished. As you've seen, we've had the whole cabling coming through the vehicle and down the seat belt cover. Uh, everything is set up. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is the test. So let's go do it. All right. Well, this is the perfect place to do a test. We slept here in this beautiful plateau at 4,300 meters altitude. Anyways, incredible. So as you can see, there's the solar panels both up there. And if you turn around, you'll see how the sun 
is perfectly cleared out from any um, clouds. It is practically almost perpendicular, not fully, but almost. And so we're going to do the test now. So as you saw earlier from the application, I'm going to pull it out now. And let's see what the battery says. The battery says it's getting around 140 watts of charge right now, which is really good. Um, it means each panel is working at 70 watts out of the 120. If it was a little bit more perpendicular, then it would go a little higher. So that's what it's showing. Uh, that's great. Everything is working perfectly fine. And uh, we're super happy of the setup. All right, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something or at least you enjoyed it. Uh, and if you have any comments or feedback for us or anything about the product or solar panels in general, just leave them in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. Uh, there's tons of solar brands out there that work perfectly fine. We've tested out Sunware. I know they do great work on boats and also 4x4 vehicles. Uh, their panels are very sturdy. They're very good quality. We've never had a problem in a year and a half of having them so far. And everyone that has them, we've only heard good comments. So if you are looking for panels and you don't want to do the research, Sunware is the way to go. Thank you very much for watching the video and have a great day. Bye-bye.